Good morning, everybody. I'm David Schloss, Editor-in-Chief of Digital Photo Pro and Digital Photo Magazines. I am unfortunately cold and wet. Uh, South Carolina today. It's supposed to be warmer, but uh, global climate change. So we are here with Olympus on what's called an experiential, which is one of the press events where a company talks to us about one of their new products and gives us an opportunity to work with the products. This one we're working with the company's new 17 millimeter and 45 millimeter f 1.2 lenses. We have Magnolia Plantation behind me. We have some of the photographers behind me. I want to show a little bit on these trips what it's like to be a photographer or journalist at one of these events. Uh, there's about eight gathered journalists here from different publications, including myself. We're out here on a number of shoots that have been set up in order to test the gear. Magnolia Plantation is this beautiful, um, just sprawling plantation just outside of Charleston, South Carolina, where we came today. We're shooting some models. We're shooting some of the magnolias, which are still in blue here in the south even though it's uh, cold today um, some of the other photographers will walk behind me uh, they'll walk around while I'm here doing the live video I want to talk a little bit about these lenses also what they mean for Olympus what they mean for Olympus photographers so you know one of the things about micro four thirds the cameras are smaller and lighter and that's thanks to the micro four third sensor which is uh, you know particularly small but high performance sensor that's inside the camera one of the issues, though, is that when you work with the lens, not only do you get a focal length magnification relative to a full frame lens, but you also get a um, magnification in the effective aperture, not the light gathering, but the depth of field from the aperture. So, for example, a lens that is an f2 lens on a micro four thirds would have about the same depth of field around f4 on a full frame camera. So one of the issues that that gives photographers who are working with a small system like the Olympus camera is uh, issues when it comes to really uh, nice depth of field or what a lot of people call bokeh or bokeh, depending on where you're from. That's because if you have a lens with a uh, f2.5 or you know two uh, widest aperture on these cameras, those lenses are actually going to look like a 4 or a 5.6 lens just in terms, again, of depth of field. So what Olympus has now uh, out and what we're here to test is two of three new lenses in their uh, series of pro lenses that have a maximum aperture of f1.2. So that gives you about an f2.5 equivalent on a full frame, frame camera. But one of the things that the engineers that are here who will probably walk behind me at some point have been talking about is the lengths that Olympus went through to design a lens that not only has good wide uh, open aperture and bokeh, but what they like to call feathered bokeh. All the companies have a different term for the type of bokeh that um, they produce. So there's a couple of different types of bokeh. And for those of you who don't know what it is, we're talking about the soft focus that happens in the part of a, an image that is the out of focus part of the image. Uh, a lot of cameras, or a lot of lenses that have soft defocus will have uh, bokeh, it's the quality of the softness. Some of them produce uh, just a, like a solid ring, so if you've seen a picture of Christmas lights, for example, and f out of focus in the background, it might be like a solid ring of light. Some of them have a, like, some people call it donut bokeh, which is a softer ring in the middle, a thicker ring on the outside. What Olympus with these lenses and what a lot of companies with their new lenses are trying to do is make a much softer, smoother background defocus in order to make the bokeh stand out less. Now, why would you want the bokeh to stand out less? So when you're taking a picture of something like a model, you're taking a picture of a car or food, and there's lights in the background that are out of focus, you don't really want those lights to be the main subject most of the time. And with a bokeh where there's just bright circles in the background, that jumps out to the human eye, you tend to see that more. So what Olympus is trying to do with the with this lens is have a feathered bokeh, which is just a smoother bokeh. We've seen similar things on some of the new lenses uh, from other manufacturers. So the feathered bokeh uh, will only appear at the wide open f1.2 aperture. As soon as you start to stop down the lenses, you go back to a more traditional bokeh. And so the question becomes, how good is this lens at capturing things at that f1.2? You know, a lot of lenses, especially wide angle lenses, um, are not the sharpest at their fully wide open aperture. And this is just a principle of optics that affects most lenses. So a lot of photographers will buy a lens that's a 1.4 lens or 1.8 lens on a full frame camera, but never really shoot at that 1.4 or 1.8 because it's not the sharpest that they can possibly get. Uh, lens technology has really improved. We saw some of the simulation software that Olympus uses in order to make these lenses. They can really uh, determine what the bokeh is supposed to look like and they 
can backwards engineer the lenses to create that. Whereas in the past, lens engineers would design a lens and the bokeh would be a result of the other things that was happening in the design. Here they can drive it with the, the design to the bokeh. Um, so yeah, the question becomes at f1.2, how usable is this lens? And that's what we've been testing for a number of days. I have to say that uh, I have to go and pixel peep the images. They have been really very sharp at f1.2. The face detect and the eye detect focus really help with that. We've been able to get really crisply defined subject with soft bokeh in the background. Now, can you tell right away if bokeh is feathered bokeh or a regular bokeh? It's really hard to do that in a lot of cases. You have to have a pretty strong light source in the background. If you're shooting here somewhere like a plantation where your background is a building or a tree, the feather bokeh may not help a lot. But if you're shooting out with something like really bright lights behind a cityscape, uh, you have models set up with lights uh, shining behind them in order to do catch lights. The feather bokeh does make a difference, but again, the difference disappears unless you're at f1.2, so you have to be shooting wide open for that feather uh, bokeh effect. We're going to be doing a lot more reviews of these lenses. Um, it really makes the Olympus platform for shooters who are depending on this uh, for their living, it really makes this a more attractive platform for doing portrait work, for doing other work, because it's the first time you're really getting just this wide open aperture that uh, is more commonplace on full frame cameras. So an F1.4 or an F1.8 lens on a full frame camera is not uncommon. You can get them from manufacturers and third party companies like you know, Tamron and Sigma. Everybody makes a 1.4 and 1.8 lens. When it comes to the Olympus system, you really need to use these lenses in order to get something that is sort of just a traditional bit of available lens kit for the full frame photographer. So it's something to think about when you're considering what system you want to shoot with. As part of the design, all three of their lenses that are f1.2 lenses are the same exact uh, dimensions. They're the same width, they're the same length. The focus rings are in the same place. Part of this was designed just to have the lenses have a similar appearance. Part of this was designed in order to have the lenses work with video. You could get a focusing ring uh, rig for the Olympus camera for all three of these lenses, and it would be the same focus rig across all three of the lenses because everything's in the same place. So for video shooters, that's really attractive. It enables you to buy less equipment to do pull focus and other things that you that you may want to do if you're shooting video. So we're going to go and shoot a little bit more uh, here. We've been shooting a couple of things so far. Yesterday we were shooting on Rainbow Row in South Carolina in Charleston, which is a row of houses that are painted beautiful colors. We went uh, and did some shooting in the morning at a um, an equestrian location where they do horse polo. I actually think that the images of the, of the horses were a good test. There was a foal, you can see this on our Instagram at Digital Photo Pro right now. There was a foal, a baby horse, that as the polo horses were starting to run around, it got really excited and it started to buck and gallop and it, it wanted to play also. And uh, I happened to be in the right spot when it was galloping and I, I you know, I caught the, the horse, happened to be at f1.2. You can see sharpness on one of the eyes of the horse and that the focus starts as it goes down the horse. It's really a really nice example of quick autofocus in today's cameras and how really great they are at capturing things that just happen to come along. Uh, so we did some of that yesterday. We did some shooting inside restaurants uh, where we had some nice uh, ability to track things that were going down a line. For shooters who are looking for soft focus, great lenses. Again, we're going to be doing more reviews today. We're here. I'm really looking forward to the next stop, which is a distillery, which is why I'm doing the video here, because we're going to be doing a tasting at the distillery. And it's like five minutes to 11 right now. So by noon, we should be drinking whiskey. Uh, I also walked out a little bit last night, took some pictures of Christmas lights and some other things in downtown Charleston to get a feel of how this camera works, not only at f1.2, but also at night. Another nice thing about having a wide open lens, remember I said that the effective aperture uh, on a full frame camera would be different. The light gathering capabilities, however, are not. And so when you're shooting this lens at f1.2, even though the depth of field might uh, be an apparent the same as a 2.5 on a full frame camera, the light gathering at f1.2 uh, is the same. So that's really great for astrophotography is one area where I would really like to spend some time with this camera. Um, 17 millimeters is a little bit not quite wide enough for most astrophotography work. I would probably use it if you were shooting a landscape format where you had a building with a Milky Way going off to it or a tree or some other geological feature that was defining the shot. Um, 
it doesn't quite capture as much of the sky as I usually like to. However, that said, at f1.2, you're able to get a lot of light coming into the lens, which means you can use a lower ISO, which means you can get an image that requires less processing, has less sensor noise. Um, so again, we're here in Charleston, South Carolina. We're testing these lenses. Wanted to just show you a little bit. Uh, normally right now we would have the models out right behind us uh, and shooting them, but it's been pretty rainy and drizzly, uh, so we're not going to take them out and make them stand in the rain. I'm going to have more reviews of the Olympus lenses up shortly on our website. There will be images for the next few days on the at Digital Photo Pro Instagram feed. Uh, we will have some sample images also that you can look at when the articles come out at, at a larger size. More impressions and we'll have some blog posts coming up just talking about the trip and the things we noticed about working with the camera and working with these lenses. If you want more information on Digital Photo Pro, go visit us at digitalphotopro.com. You can also visit Digital Photo Magazine at dpmag.com and also Outdoor Photographer Magazine, our sister publication at outdoorphotographer.com. If you need any more information from me, you can ask questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Or you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at David J. Schloss. I'll put that in the notes below when I go back and edit this video. Uh, looking forward to seeing if you have any questions. If there's anything you want us to test with these lenses while we're here, any specific subjects, let me know and I will get to testing that. And I appreciate you watching it and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, everybody.